So welcome. We are getting ready and getting set for our Deckmar Trades Small Account Challenge 2019. I know this is one of the most anticipated events for trading, especially in our chat room. And uh, I'm very excited to be able to dive into this. I'm very excited to work with you guys this year. This is something that we like to do every single year. And it's something that really shows you know, how great our community is. It shows how to grow a small account. It shows how to be a successful trader in the stock market. And we're gonna be going into purposes of the small account challenge. But first off, let's talk about last year's small account challenge. If you guys were here last year, we did do our small account challenge. Our starting amount was $4,000. The total trades it took me to reach my goal of $80,000 was 59 trades. Total winning trades were 41. Total losing trades was 18. My average win was a 69% win rate, and my time span took me about six months to get this done. The ending account was $80,000 and 76, uh, or 80,000 bucks, $76.84. So I was able to profit about $76,000 in about six months right here. What I really enjoy about these statistics is that it only took me 59 trades. I think that's really awesome that it took me 59 trades to be able to reach the level of success and hit my goal of that $80,000 mark of a $76,000 profit with only 59 trades. And why am I so kind of you know, happy about that? It's because I know traders who trade 15 times a day. 10 times a day, 20 times a day. And it's not about uh, how many trades you make in the stock market, right? It's about how much you make from those trades. Not about quantity, about quality. So there's going to be times that I'm only going to take maybe one trade, two trades, three trades, four trades a week. Not, you know, throughout one day. We'll see. It's about being disciplined, waiting for those easy setups, and going from there. So it took me total nine, uh, 59 trades, 41 of them were wins, and 18 of them were losses. That breaks it down to a 69% win rate. So in other words, 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 trades I was able to win on, and uh, I'm very happy about that. That's something I'm very proud of, to be able to win 7 out of 10 times. So if I cut my losses on those three times I do lose, I know that I'm going to be able to make you know big time profit because it's right there. If I win seven out of ten times, first off, I have a great potential, great potential of winning to start with. But if a trade doesn't go my way, and if I'm currently you know taking a loss, let me just cut out and move on. Because statistically speaking, I have a great chance to go ahead and make money on my next trade. And this took about six months, and I was able to make again seventy six thousand dollars and hit my eighty thousand dollar goal. Now I want to do that all again within the same time frame, you know, six month time frame, but it really all depends. It all depends on market conditions. It all depends on what press releases we get. It all depends on um, really the big time spiking, the penny stock market conditions. If we go through a slow little period, I'm not going to be able to make that much in a short amount of time. If we go through a hot period, guess what? I'll be able to make even more money than that $80,000 in a shorter amount of time. It really just depends on what the market throws us. But I am shooting for right around that six month goal and hopefully get this right, uh, right around towards that $100,000 mark. As you can see, just always wanna post that P&L. That was the P&L from last year. And you can see we started back in August. We finished up right in around March with an $80,000 profit. That is from my E-Trade account uh, screenshotted, just so you guys can see that. Also, if you guys go to YouTube and type in Deckmar Trades, $80,000, or Deckmar Trades uh, Trader turned in $4,000 to $80,000, that's the title, uh, you'll be able to watch that whole entire video. And that's an hour-long video going over all my P&Ls, showing you guys my verified profits from E-Trade, and making sure that you guys completely understand how I was able to make that money, my strategy that last year uh, that I will be progressing into this year to be able to make this uh, profit that we're going to be upcoming. So what is the main goal? What is the main goal of me doing this small account challenge? First off, open a $4,000 cash account and turn it into a $100,000 trading account. That's obviously the main goal. I want to open up a small account and turn it into a larger account. That's, that's the small account challenge, baby. That's the dream, to be able to be a, uh, a trader with a small account and be able to change this account to a large account, be
be able to make a great living, to be able to make not only a great living, a great year, a great year of salary right here, right? 96 grand a year just from trading, from your apartment, from your office, being able to be your own boss, being able to reach success, being able to make your own office, right? That's the most important thing. You know, there's so much freedom in stock trading. There's so much freedom from the time you work, from being your own boss, from where you work, from your own salary that you determine on how hard you work. That's the beauty of this. And I want to show you guys that it is possible. And again, this is the third time now I'm going to be growing a small account. It worked out exactly how I want it. And it's just from, again, staying consistent. It's from staying disciplined. And it's waiting for those trades. I understand not everyone who signs up to Deckmark Trades, not everyone who hops in our chat room is going to have $25,000 plus. dollars. Some people have $1,500 in their account. Some people have $2,000 in their account. Some people have $5,000 in their account. And I want to show you that you are not limited just from having a smaller account. Is it tougher to grow on a smaller account? Yes. You know what? Someone who has $50,000, it's a lot easier to turn that $50,000 into $100,000 than it is to turn $1,500 uh, into $15,000. That's a more tougher task because you are going to have to stay with smaller plays. You aren't going to be able to buy as many shares. But that does not mean that you cannot trade. And that's why I want to put myself in those trader shoes, show you guys how I would do it, show you guys the proper way that I would grow an account, and you guys can learn and you guys can see exactly what I'm doing all again while live streaming. Of course, brings us to our next point. Stream every trade. So, you know, over 500 traders every single day. Now, again, you know, we always have over 500 traders in the chat. But with that being said, I want to be able to stream to you guys for you guys to see exactly what I'm doing. For you guys to see, you know, where I am buying, for you guys to see what stocks I am buying, and you guys see what press releases I am looking at, for you guys to see absolutely everything on my monitor, right? There is nothing that I am hiding. If I, again, stream everything, if I live commentate everything, obviously you guys are going to be able to see it. You guys will be able to hear it, right? I'm going to be talking you guys through exactly my thought process. So not only am I streaming every trade where you can see my monitor and everything I'm doing, you guys will also be able to hear my thoughts as I'm going to be speaking to you guys and be able to tell you exactly why I'm buying into these plays, why I'm not buying into these plays, my entries, my exits, my stop losses, my targets, everything along those lines. Last but not least, to be transparent, right? I want to be 100% transparent. That is huge to me transparency and that's why last year i was basically showing everything on e-trade i was even showing like my e-trade account because i didn't want one person to be like hey you know what this isn't real this is paper trading this is fake trading you know he's not really trading that's what i want to 100 percent avoid cut out and i want to, didn't want to give anyone a chance to say that because i said hey you know what here's a live screen share of me logging into e-trade.com showing everything even my account number and saying hey this is real money right here I'm trading real money. I'm trading my real money on my alerts that I'm calling out. Because that is something that we don't see. I don't see that by you know, many other mentors whatsoever at all. I see a lot of screenshots from simulators. That is fake paper trading. I see a lot of just, hey, look how much I made. I don't see much credibility. I don't see much credibility at all on, on the internet nowadays. So that's why everything that I do I want to be 100% transparent. You want to see a P&L from the small account challenge? Hit me up. I'll show it to you. I'll send it to you. Every single day, win or lose, after I trade, I'll show you the P&L. Show you is real. Show is from TD Ameritrade. And show you guys exactly what you guys asked for. So how? How am I going to do this? How am I going to turn a $4,000 account into $80,000 once again? into $90,000, into $100,000. How am I going to make this happen? Well, this is huge. This is going to be my strategy, especially when starting off. We're going to break this down a little bit. There's a lot of points right here. Buy at least 500 to 1,000 shares on every trade. This is so important, and this is so crucial. You have to be able to buy enough shares to be able to make profit in the stock market, guys. If you are buying 50 shares 
70 shares, 100 shares, you are not going to be able to make the money you want to make. You will not be able to grow a small account. I'm sorry. Why is that? Because you are going to need not only giant spikes and giant rips, but you are going to have to play these stocks absolutely perfect if you are buying like 50 shares, 100 shares. You need to be able to buy at least you know, 500 to 1,000 shares per trade. That means, yes, you probably are putting your whole entire account into a play every time you guys trade it. But with that being said, that doesn't mean you put your whole entire account and it's make or break on that one trade. When you put a whole entire account into a play, it does not mean, oh, if I lose this trade, I lose my whole entire account. If you guys are down 10 bucks and you guys don't like the way things are looking, then sell. And you know what? You get your whole entire account back minus the $10 you just lost, right? If I have a $4,000 account and I'm down 10 bucks and I'm not feeling it, it's not like, oh boy, I lost everything. No, you just sell and you make back $3,990, right? So a lot of people kind of get nervous about that and they say, oh, you know, people tell me I could only put 10% of my account and 20% of my account while they're on like a $1,500 account. It's like, yeah, you're going to buy a stock with 150 bucks. You know, you're not going to be able to buy any shares whatsoever, right? So you have to play within your limits. So starting off, I'm going to have to be playing stocks that are probably like $4 or below. So unless, I, unless you know, these stocks are coming out with press releases that are $1, $2, $3, maybe $4. I can play them, but if anything is you know eight dollars, ten dollars, I'm gonna have to sit out from them, and that's again coming down to a little bit of discipline. If I see a stock that's outside of my price range, I should say to myself, "Hey, it's not worth it for me." You know, I'll wait for my next one. Let me not use my funds at this time. I don't want to get involved with that. I need to be smart. I need to know when to pull the trigger, and I need to have the necessary funds. 500 shares means every time a stock moves a penny, you make five bucks. Ten, uh, 1,000 shares means every time a stock moves a penny, you make 10 bucks. So if I get a 50 cent rip on 1,000 shares, that's an extra $500. So I need to buy that. Now that's going to cover up any commissions, any trading fees, and I'm all set, right? That's how I'm going to grow a small account. That's how I've grown my last two small accounts is by doing 500 to 1,000 shares on every trade when you're on your account. Now, as your account progresses, yes, you add more, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever. But starting off, guys, we definitely need to be on the smaller side. Or we need to basically, yeah, we're going to be on the smaller side, but we need as many as we can um, with our smaller account. But it will be on the smaller side with only 500 to 1,000. But I'm not doing you know, 10 to 50 shares. We already basically hit up you know, buy stocks within our price range. That's going along the lines of everything we just talked about. Let's not buy stocks $10, $20 that we can only afford 10 shares on. Not worth our time. All right. This is big as well. Do not buy any stock that has spiked more than 50 cents without a pullback you know, and or consolidation. I'm not going to be getting involved with a stock if it already spiked. On a small account, it is so crucial that you guys are staying positive, that you guys are seeing green that you guys are waiting for the best play possible, you cannot be chasing plays. If you see a big time rip, if you see a big time run, and you say, oh boy, it's time for me to get on in, what's most likely going to happen? That's the time you're going to lose. Because that is where the stock is most likely going to be at its top. If I'm one of the first people in, if I find a hot press release, if I find a hot chart setup, and I can nail it, awesome. Let me ride that thing on up. But if I'm not, and the stock has ripped and the stock has run and everyone is having you know joy and they're screaming hey i just made 500 bucks everyone's giggling oh i just made a 1200 bucks and while you're sitting there just trying not to fight those emo you're trying to fight those emotions from you know everyone else laughing and having a great time and you haven't traded yet you have to say to yourself hey i'm not going to risk it because that thing just went on a big time run and what happens after big time runs it comes back on down right who's been in that situation before where basically the stock is ripping stock is running everyone's having a ball everyone's having the greatest time of their life and you haven't traded yet and you're just like oh you know, i don't know what to do you know i shouldn't get in yet right and then what happens you usually get in the stock turns on you and it falls and i'm not going to risk that i'm not going to let my emotions take over me and say hey you know get in right now you know you're missing out you're missing out no it's like hey i'll just wait for the next one there's, there's literally spikes every day. Why, again, force it on a play that you have a great chance of losing on? 
So if that does happen, we do know stocks can go on very big rips and runs after it consolidates a little bit. So maybe look for a bounce play. Maybe look for a consolidation channel pattern, then a breakout, right? Then we can look from there. But that's something I definitely want to be you know, sticking with, you know, not chasing any of these plays. All right. What's next, guys? Trade low float runners with news. That's going to be my primary play. You guys know I love these low float runners. You know, that's how the majority of penny stock traders like them. These nice low float runners that come out with good news. Positive phase three treatments on their drug, right? Treatments with any sort of anything related with cancer. Um, positive updates on its phase two. Partnerships, contracts, right? Anything along those lines, we usually see very big rips. I'm going to be looking for a lot of pre-market plays, guys. Why pre-market plays? Because pre-market plays is one of the best times to get in to grow a small account. Because you can be in first. You can be in before lazy traders are sleeping in, waking up later and saying, oh, okay, there's a good news. I'm going to buy it. A lot of the times, I'm going to be up at 7 in the morning and I'm going to be waiting for that hot press release. And if I see a hot press release comes out at 7.30 in the morning, guess what? I'm going to be buying into it. I'm going to be buying into this play and I'm going to be looking to get in and make my money if the stock goes from 7.30, rips, you know, a dollar all the way up to 8 o'clock and I sell at 8 o'clock and I made my $700 and you sign on at 9.30 and say, Deck, what the heck, man? You know, this is a small account challenge. You know, why are you trading right now? It's like, I trade at 7.30 to 8. I was awake. Yeah, but I wasn't. I was sleeping. You're supposed to wait for me. I got to grow my small account. It's not my fault you're being lazy. It's not my fault that you're, you know, uh, you're sleeping in. It's not my fault you're not sacrificing sleep for profit, right? This is a small account challenge to grow a small account. To grow a small account, you need to be here. To grow a small account, you need to be watching the market. The market, Wall Street, does not care about how much you want to sleep. It's not like brokers are like, all right, it's you know 9:45, and you know little Ricky, you know, has not woken up yet. We really got to get this show on the road. Can someone call him again, please? <laughs> it's like, oh no, he kept you know ignoring me. Doesn't care. If you don't wake up, you miss out on plays, right? If you do not wake up, you miss out on plays. It's as simple as that. You need to be able to say to yourself, I'm dedicated to this. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be up for these plays. If they happen, great. If they don't happen, well, again, I'm awake and I'm ready to go. Not every day we are going to see, um, you know, big time spikes in pre-market. We don't see it every day. We're not going to see, you know, giant pre-market press releases every day. And I know it's tough sometimes when you, t you know, set the alarm clock two hours early to wake up and nothing happens. And you're like, oh, I could have, you know, slept in. Then what happens? You start sleeping in. You start missing out on plays. So I'm looking for these good news, these nice low float runners with good news. All right, next point, trade in the hottest times of the day, the morning and in the afternoon. What are the hottest times in the stock market? Hottest times in the stock market when the day is actually open is from 9.30 to 11. It's about 2.15 to 4. And that's me. I'm on the East Coast right next to New York, New York time. With that being said, guys, you know, if you guys are over on the West Coast, you guys will have to adjust your time a little bit. But the hottest time is the first hour and a half and the last hour and a half. The majority of the time I will be trading will be most likely in the morning. There won't be many times, especially at the start, that I'm going to be trading too much in the afternoon. Now, that depends. You know, we could definitely see a, a press release drop in the afternoon. We could definitely see you know, a chart pattern set up in the afternoon, especially if it's like a continuation breakout and a supernova. You know, it could definitely be in the afternoon. But a lot of the times in the start, it is going to be somewhere in the morning between 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. Because that is when you know I like to see the best potential. I'm not saying I'm never going to trade in the afternoon, but I'm saying especially at the start, that's where I feel the most comfortable, and that's where I want to get the ball going going a little bit. You know, the stock market, as I said, it's like a football game. First quarter, you know, kickoff. What's going on? You're fired up. You're standing there in the seats. Oh, you know, you know, you're having a great time, right? Then what happens after the first quarter? You know, you start sitting down. Legs get a little tired. Halftime comes. Lunch hours. You know, you're just like, all right. You know, let me go to the bathroom, let me get a hot dog. You know, not really anything to watch here. Then what comes? Fourth quarter comes, you know, eventually. And then you're standing back on, you know, oh, you know, you're going crazy again. The first quarter, the fourth quarter are the craziest. And that's basically saying the first hour and a half, the last hour and a half are usually the craziest. All right, what's, uh, what's also important? What's a, uh, a part of my strategy? 
cut losses as quickly as possible. This means I'm going to have a 15 cent stop loss or a $200 max loss on my plays, guys. That means if I am ever down 200 bucks, I do not care. I am cutting out. It is not worth it to me anymore. I am on a small account. Losing $200 is not good. That is going to take a nice little chunk, a nice little percentage away from my account. I am not going to sit there and say, please come back up. All right? Please, I need this one. Please come back on up. I'm not going to say, let me hold a little bit longer. You know, maybe this one's going to happen. You know, can you please stop? Come on. No, that's not what I'm going to do. If I am not, again, profiting and I am coming on down on a play, right? Get out. Cut your losses. Move on. We already know. Last year when I did this, I had a 7 out of 10 win rate. So what's the point of me sitting on a loser when I could just lose $600, $700, and now I'm putting myself in a hole? Now I'm making this very difficult for me. Why would I do that? Instead, have a nice tight stop loss. If I'm down, more than, if I'm down 200 bucks, get out and move on. That play is not worth it. There's going to be better breakouts. There's going to be better rippers. There's going to be better runs in the future. Right? All right. What else do we have? Trade stocks with an 80% reward, 20% risk chart setup. Now, if you guys are in our chat at tradecaster.com, you guys already know that uh, what I like to look at with our 80%, 20%, right? We have our 80% reward, 20% risk. It's one of those patterns I teach, those masterpiece patterns. Those are, you know, patterns that I really enjoy. I want to find patterns, simply enough, that I have an 80% reward and 20% risk. How do I find these? I like for those nice squeezes, right? The nice, uh, right next to the nice bottom support, the low RSI. So stocks that are near its bottom that has a lot of potential to go sky high. If a stock has a high RSI, if a stock already went on a nice run recently, if the stock is sitting up on after a big time gap up, you know, up 100%, is that worth getting in on me? Well, that stock has a, room, a lot of room to fall. That stock could have a lot of sellers coming soon. That stock could have a lot of shorters. There could be a lot of profit taking coming in. Let me not get involved with those. Right? Let me sit back. There's no reason to get involved with those type of plays. Right? So, let me uh, make sure I'm sticking with that. Stay disciplined. No forcing, no overtrading, no bag holding, no emotions. I'm basically just spitting out right here all the top reasons why a lot of rookie traders fail. A lot of top reasons on what are rookies' uh, worst habits, right? You know, over trading, bag holding, forcing, emotions taking over. You guys want to grow a small account, make it a big account, be a professional trader, you got to act like one. If you guys are, again, uh, doing rookie mistakes and they still have rookie habits, you're not going to be able to grow your account the way you guys want. So you guys have to stick to this. You guys have to be smart. Last but not least, guys, most likely will not be trading on Fridays. Now, every single Friday, I will commentate, of course. Every single Friday, scanners are going to be up. Every single Friday, I'll be doing my thing as I always do. But as we know, Fridays are the toughest trading day of the week. Now, have there been big spikes on Fridays? Absolutely. BPTH, the stock that went from $3 to $75, actually started on a Friday where it went from around 3 to 6 on that day. But with that being said, Fridays usually are you know, more the tougher days because we don't have as much news. We don't have as many traders, and traders usually end up their weekends very quickly. So you know, for instance, right, a lot of traders say, hey, I won, I lost, I'm going to go out of here, got a plane to catch, got to go pick up grandma, got to go hang out with my girlfriend, got to go do this thing for the weekend. We see volume really disappear really quickly on Fridays if there's nothing going on. Because people just go start off their weekend. Volume equals activity. Activity equals profit. If we don't have anyone else trading, don't expect your stock to move. Will there be a few Fridays that I'm going to be trading? Yes. There will be a few Fridays that I'm going to hop on. If I see a nice you know, low float play with some good news, I see some momentum moving in on some plays, I will hop in. But I'm just kind of wanted to kind of put that right there. Just kind of implant it in your brain a little early that, you know, I don't know how much trading I will get done on Fridays just because that's always been a little bit of my tougher days. And even in my past chart, you know, even in my past history of trading, Fridays are usually the day I end up taking a loss. 
I think out of last year, it was like the majority of the time I lost, it was on a Friday. So I kind of just want to stay away from that a little bit. So let's move on here. Live streaming and commentary. Every trade will be live streamed with commentary. Live commentary will include reason on why I am buying, what is my entry, what is my exit, what is my sell target, and what is my stop loss. Commentary will be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. to 15 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If I trade in pre-market or after hours, I will do live commentary as well. And again, to get access to our live commentary and live streaming, this is all going down on Tradecaster.com. All right, the number one website for us traders taking over. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a little heads up. A lot of people ask me, hey, if you hop in a trade on pre-market, you usually don't do your commentary in pre-market. Will you be uh, hop on the mic then? Yes. So if I ever hop on uh, a trade during pre-market or in after hours, I will, of course, you know, jump on the mic and tell you what I'm thinking, what's going on. The point of commentary is all to be credible, guys. Uh, the point of commentary is to always tell you guys my reason. We're going to go into that in a little bit. But as you guys can see right here, our commentary from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. to 15 to 4, you know, we're commentating for about five hours a day. Now, this is our regular schedule, right? If you guys are not in the, the Decmar Trades chat, if you guys are not with us on Tradecaster, we always do, you know, five to six hours every single day. And that's because I don't ever want to be a mentor. I never want to be a trader that's just saying what? Hey guys, you know, welcome, good morning. All right, just traded stock, you know, X, Y, Z. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Bye, have a good night, everyone. Bye, I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Happy, happy Monday. How is that, you know, how is that helpful to you at all? And there's a lot of people that do that, that they trade for five minutes and then they're gone. And then all it is is just, you know, a blank chat room with people saying, all right, what are we doing next? Again, I'm here for you. If you guys are here, I'm going to give you guys my 100% and I'm going to give you guys my 100% every single day, as you guys know. I've been doing this for the last four years now and every single day. I'm here from 7 in the morning till 6 o'clock at night with doing commentary for five hours a day because I respect you guys being here that much. You guys are taking time out of your life. You guys are taking time where you guys could be doing literally anything else you guys want, but you guys have chose to learn from me, learn my strategy, and be part of that chat. I respect that so much. It inspires me so much, and it motivates me so much that that's why I always want to do, again, five hours of commentary to help you guys out. Even when I'm not trading, let you guys know if I was trading, what would I be looking at, what, uh, and help you guys out with, of course, all your questions, doing recaps and lessons every single day. We'll be doing recaps. We'll be doing lessons. I'll be answering all your questions you want to have. And of course, we also have our one-on-one -on -one chat where you guys can DM me, talk to me directly, and I'll be happy to answer anything that you guys may have a little more personal that you don't want to ask in chat. Definitely understandable, and I'm happy to help any way I possibly can. You guys fire me up. You guys can tell I'm getting fired up right now. I love doing this stuff. So moving on, talk about my credibility. Number one, I will always have a reason on why I trade the stocks I do. There will not be a time I ever say, guys, I'm buying stock ABC. Everyone else buy it. I'm not doing that. I've never have done that. You know, I'm not going to say, hey, I'm buying this stock XYZ right now. Buy it, buy it, buy it. If you don't buy it, you're missing out. Who didn't buy it? If you didn't buy it, you're getting kicked from the chat. No, again, I will never do that because that doesn't show any reasoning. It doesn't show any credibility right? If I buy a stock, it's I'm buying the stock because this stock has this press release, because this stock has this press release and these indicators squeezing the play, because this stock has this press release and this squeeze indicator with a low float, with a high RSI or a low RSI. We have a beautiful channel pattern right here. Watch your bounce play with support. The stock could easily bounce back on up and we could see a break of resistance. This stock has this chart pattern with this, you know, setup. I'm expecting you know, a lot of the volume to move in at this break. Everything I want to do, I'm going to explain to you guys so you, as a trader, the people who are also looking to grow a small account, can understand why I am buying it, right? Me saying I'm buying this play, crickets, crickets, crick, and me not explaining anything, that doesn't help you. It does not help you at all. You guys are here to grow your small accounts. I get that. I understand that. You guys are here to make money, but you guys are not here to not ever learn anything either, right? You guys, the education is just as important as I think as making the actual profit 
because you guys can learn and invest that education and be able to say, hey, now I can go ahead and make more profit, right? So each trade will have a recap and detailed explanation behind why I chose to trade the stock. So even after we trade the stock, we will be doing a lesson and a recap as we do every day on why I trade the stock I did, right? I chose this stock because 15 minutes later, you know, we go through our lesson and I go through everything, right? It had a press release right here. We had this chart set up. We had, you know, continuation. We had this, we had that. So I'm always going to be credible on why I pick the stocks I do, on why I buy the stocks I do, all right? And again, last but not least, not only does this give you an education, but it also gives you confidence, right? It's great if, you know, maybe I call out and say, hey, you know, this is a stock I'm looking to get into. And you know what? You guys, let's say, you know, hopping on it as well, and you guys make money. That's great. But for me, to be able to explain it, you guys are not only learning, but you're having that one emotion that we should have, which is confidence. So it's like a win-win situation while I'm explaining why I'm getting in on these plays, uh, what I'm looking for, everything along these lines to back up not only my credibility, to not only give you an education, but to also give you confidence in yourself, give you confidence in myself, and take, you know, give yourself confidence in your trading all around. So I think that's absolutely great. With that being said, transparency. Every trade, I will show my P&L from TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade is the broker I am using. I will show my P&L on every single trade uh, after I trade it. There will be, a, on TD Ameritrade, there is a one day uh, little like settle fee where basically, not settle fee, like a settlement time uh, for the P&L to have the realized gain. I can show you the unrealized gain still. And I also can show you my broker uh, from TOS that shows where I got in, where I got out, and it'll show you the times as well. So there's you know, a couple different areas. If anyone ever has any sort of question on, hey, can I see this P&L, anything along those lines, no problem whatsoever, right? Um, I will also post monthly statements at the end of each month of my small account challenge. How did I do you know, coming up in March? How did I do as we move in April? How do we you know, do coming up in June, July, August, right? So I will be posting my monthly statements as well. I will show all my wins and show all my losses. I'll tell you right now, I'm human. I will take losses, right? Last year, I took 18 losses. So it's not like I'm going to win every single trade. Would I like to win every single trade? Yeah. I'll tell you right now, if I can win every trade, that would be awesome. And I'll go after it. And I'm going to try to make, it, make sure I win every single trade. But I'm sure there's going to be maybe a few losses along the way. And I'm okay with showing you guys that. And why am I okay with showing you guys that? Because one, I want to be transparent. And two, I want to let you guys know a loss is going to happen. It's part of the game. You should never be discouraged from taking one loss. Because sometimes, again, you're doing everything you can. Sometimes you get a little unlucky. Sometimes, you know, things just aren't in your favor, but a lot of times these losses are lessons and the last thing you should ever do is put your head down, right? It's like shooting a basketball, right? You don't go into a basketball game, take one shot in your first quarter, let's say miss the first quarter shot, and then the rest of the game you're just moping around saying, oh, I can't do this, I stink. No, that's not what you do. You say, give me the rock again, give me the ball, I'm going to shoot this three, I'm going to make it this time, Right? If all NBA players, all, after they first shot they missed, they just say, oh, this is awful. Oh, that's a bad night. You know, that's, they're not doing that. You know, Steph Curry, the best shooter in the, the league, he shoots all the time and he misses. He misses all the time. I mean, he makes the majority of them, but he misses a lot as well. But you know what? He keeps shooting and he keeps shooting and he keeps shooting. Same exact thing that you guys are going to do. If you take a loss, you, you learn from it and you keep going. And you keep trading the best plays, and you stay confident. But you learn from them. You learn from your losses. A loss is a, a loss is not a failure, right? A loss is a lesson to be learned. If you don't ever look at it, if you ignore it, then yes, it's a failure, right? But it's a it is a lesson to be learned. So, I'll be showing all my P and Ls. I'll be showing everything from TD Ameritrade. I want to make sure that everyone knows this is 100% my real account with my real money, trading my alerts doing this in front of everybody, that's the most important thing to me, right? Because I know on the internet nowadays, 
things get a little crazy where people aren't 100% honest. And with that being said, I want to make sure that you guys can see this and you guys know that you guys can trust me. And that's why I did this the same exact way last year, which obviously shows a ton of credibility as well. So let's move on. Why am I using a cash account? Again, we have two different accounts. There is a margin account and there's a cash account. So why am I using a cash account right here? I'm using a cash account because A, it keeps me disciplined. When I have a cash account, guys, I am not going to have any sort of margin or as any sort of giant buying power, right? When I have a $3,000 uh, a a $3, uh, margin account, I may be able to buy upwards of $6,000, $9,000 in buying power, right? Even maybe more than that, depending on what your broker gives you. I don't want that when I'm first starting off. When I first start, you know, start trading, I don't want to have you know, just my account. Can I buy more shares with margin? And could I possibly make more money with margin? Yes. But I could also lose more money with margin, especially on a quicker amount of time and, again, in a, in a quicker manner. So if I take one bad trade and I'm buying, let's say, 4,000, 5,000 shares, and that trade doesn't work out for me, there goes my $200 limit. And this thing could be a $900, $1,200 loss just like that. And guess what? That's, again, putting myself in a very tough situation. That's putting myself in a very tough hole if that happens, right? So that's why if I'm going to trade, especially at the start of my small account challenge, I want to be you know, kept disciplined. I want to have decent wins and very small losses, right? I want to be able to say to myself, hey, limit me a little bit. That's okay. Spider-Man's uncle, right? He says great power comes with great responsibility. A lot of people don't have a lot of great responsibility in the stock market. They're too emotional. So I want to stay a little disciplined. I like how I can't buy as much. I like how I can still make money, but if things aren't going my way, I'm not going to be in on enough shares really for me to, to be able to take any a big time loss. So it takes a little bit more time, but it also keeps me a lot more disciplined. The big one, guys, no PDT rule, right? The PDT rule is for margin accounts. When you guys are on a cash account, there is no PDT rule. Every time I post, hey, a small account challenge starts Monday, March 25th, I always get someone comment, how are you doing a small account challenge when you don't have $25,000 in your account? How are you going to trade? Because I'm using the cash account. You can trade as much as you want on a cash account as long as you have funds in your account, right? The reason with uh, the PDT rule only being able to trade three times because you're using buyer, buying power, you're using margin, the SEC doesn't want you doing that and limit, you know, limits yourself on that. When you're using your own cash account, it's like, yeah, you're using your own money. Do whatever you want. That's basically like the mindset there. It's like, hey, you know, do whatever you want. It's your money. You know, you're not borrowing any money for us. You're not using any sort of margin from us. You know, you're all good. So there is a, a one-day settlement fee for what you use. So if I buy, let's say, uh, if I have a $4,000 account and I buy $2,000 on Monday, right, on a, on a stock, I will still have $2,000 left on Tuesday. And then that $2,000 that I uh, that settled on Tuesday, I can now use it on Wednesday. And now the $2,000 that I used on Tuesday is now settling on Wednesday, I can use that on Thursday. So if I use all $4,000 all at once, then yes, you know, I would have to sit out on Tuesday and then I would be back on Wednesday. And then I could either trade on Wednesday or sit out on Wednesday and then be able to trade on Thursday. And, you know, that happens sometimes where I'll use the whole entire account and I'll have to sit out a day. But as the account gets bigger and as the account grows, guys, what happens? I'll have 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. Monday, I'll use 8,000, right? You know, Tuesday, I'll use 6,000. Then we'll have, you know, Wednesday, I'll use that 8,000 again. Thursday, you know, I made money earlier. Now I have, you know, 7,000. Right. And then Friday, you know, I'll have that 8,000 yeah. next week. You know, everything will be all settled up again and I'll have 16,000, 17,000, 20,000 to trade with. Tuesday, I'll trade 12,000. Right. You know, Wednesday, I'll be able to trade 8,000. Made money. You know, tw you know now I have 12,000 on Friday. And then, you know, so it keeps going like that. So I, as the account gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you still find yourself that you can be able to trade as much as you want, really. Right. So once you have a big account on a cash account, you can really just trade as much as you want, as long as you don't use the whole entire account on one day. But, you know, starting off, there are going to be days that I do use the whole entire account on one day to buy the necessary shares of that 500 to that 1,000 shares that we talked about. Right. So 
Um, why a cash count? Again, as I already said, I can trade, trade as much as I would like, and our broker is TD Ameritrade. Why am I using TD Ameritrade this year? Last year, I used E-Trade. Why am I using TD Ameritrade? Just because TD Ameritrade, you can market order in on stocks underneath $1. That's, that's the only reason. And again, I already used E-Trade, so I might as well switch it up a little bit, you know, to, for all the TD Ameritrade you know, broker, uh, traders. So, you know, uh, that's one of the main reasons is on E-Trade, you can't market, it, market order in on stocks underneath $1. Now, personally, I love market ordering in on stocks. I love clicking market, buy, boom, I'm in. Especially on the fast stocks that we play. The, fa the, the very uh, fast runners, the very fast plays, right? So, you know, I like being, in, being able to market order in on plays. And especially when I'm on a small account, some plays I get into may only be 60 cents. I want to be able to market order in rather than, you know, type out a limit order. And that's just me. That's just my preference. So that's, you know, something I definitely want you guys to understand about why I'm using a you know, uh, TD Ameritrade account. Key points. What do I want to do this challenge? I want to stick to my trading plan, right? I want to be able to stick to my trading plan here. If I say, hey, this is my buy, this is my entry, this is my sell target, this is uh, my stop loss, and you know, this is where I'm looking to lock everything out, you know, at my, uh, excuse me, my sell target, where I have buy entry, sell target, stop loss, my reason, my credibility, everything along those lines, guys, I want to be able to stick to it. I don't want to change my game plan. I come up with my game plan before I hop in on it, and then basically that gets rid of all your nerves. That gets rid of all your emotions, right? Once you have your game plan set, you stick to it. You know, once it hits your stop loss, you're out. When it hits your sell target, you know, you get out then, right? You lock in your money. Next up, do not hesitate, right? Everything we do in life, if you hesitate, you usually mess up, <laughs> right? I would, uh, how many times have you seen those funny videos on the internet? Um, of people hesitating and something happens to them, right? And it, like I'm thinking of an example of like, uh, I'm thinking about like uh, cliff jumping videos. I've seen like on America's Funniest Home Videos or those type of shows where basically someone runs up to the edge of the cliff about to jump off, you know, to, to jump into water and they hesitate. And then they end up like slipping and then they end up like hitting themselves against the rocks, which, you know, isn't funny at all. I don't know why they're on that TV show, but, uh, but they end up hurting themselves really badly. What happens if, you know, you're driving a car and all of a sudden, like something jumps out in front of you. And instead of, you know, having good reaction time, you know, you hesitate, right? You hesitate. You usually get yourself inside an accident. Let's say, you know, you want to go, let's say you're a guy, you want to walk and you want to ask a girl out to a date, right? And you walk up to her and instead of just introducing yourself and being proper and being kind and talking about yourself and you walk up and say, hey, my name is food. Do you want to eat oh, me cute? Yeah, you, uh, you, you just run away. You know, you're, you're not doing very well. You just walk up there and stand there and she's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's not what you guys ever want to do. Do not hesitate in life, right? Go after it and attack it. Be confident in yourself, right? That's the most important thing, that confidence. So you do not want to hesitate. So once we get our training plan, we go after it. After that, guys, what else do we want? We want to cut our losses quickly, right? That two hundred dollar loss minimum or a max, where basically if we cut if that if we ever see that we are out. After that, do not chase. We are not chasing plays. We are not doing any of that. You know, beginner stuff, right? We're not you know uh, holding the bag and seeing large losses. We're not doing that. We are not chasing any sort of these plays. We are not getting emotional. We are not over trading, right? Lock in your profits when you have them. The only way you can grow an account is if you actually lock in your gains, guys. Not every trade is going to be, hey, let me go ahead and buy a Lamborghini, right? You know, the trade is, hey, I'm up 300 bucks on a small account. Let me lock that in. Let me be smart here. Let me say, hey, I'm up. It's, you know, the stock is up 100%. i probably start seeing some selling soon. I got some gains. It's good enough for me on the day. Understand market conditions. Every day is going to be different in the market, right? Every day we are going to be seeing uh, some, uh, some days we're going to see more spikes than others. I always like to say the market is like the weather, guys. The market conditions are like the weather. If you guys go outside one day and it's super sunny and it's beautiful, 78 degrees out, and you guys are wearing shorts and a t-shirt, you can't expect every single day to be sunny and beautiful. You may walk out the next day 
And what happens? It's raining. You may walk out you know, a little bit later, and there's a blizzard, and it's 20 degrees. You can't just have, oh, today's a nice day, shorts and a t-shirt, and nice shoes, and I'm out of here, and I'm going to wear that the rest of the day you know, for the rest of my life. You know, I'm going to wear that you know, outfit the rest of my life because that's the, the weather right now, and that's how it's going to be every day. Wrong. It's going to change. Right? The weather changes. Stock market conditions change. Sometimes it's super hot. Sometimes it's super slow. Sometimes you're attacking nonstop, and sometimes you're sitting on your hands. Right? So understand market conditions. Last but not least, do not have emotions. Do not be fearful. Do not hesitate. Do not get greedy. Do not be scared, guys. You guys can do this. But do not have emotions. Avoid the FOMO, the fear of missing out. What to expect out of our small account challenge, guys? What, am I, what, what should you guys expect out of the small account challenge? At the start, it's going to be slow. All right? Don't expect out of the first month, to turn, let's say, our $4,000 account into $20,000. Would that be awesome? Absolutely. But at the same time, I'm not going to be a fantasy trader and you know, say some crazy things like, oh, I'm going to do this all in a month. That's most likely not going to happen, guys. It's going to be slow. There will be days that you know, I will not even have any funds available to trade. There's going to be times at the start that I may trade, let's say, at 8 in the morning. And if you're not awake, well, again, you know, I'm not going to be able to trade with you, um, you know, uh, for the rest of the day, right? So three trades max a week usually, you know, because that is I trade on Monday. If I use my whole entire account, I got to sit out Tuesday. Then I can trade on Wednesday or trade on Friday. If I trade on Monday and use half my account, maybe I could trade on Tuesday and Wednesday or possibly Thursday if I sit out on Wednesday. So it's usually around three trades a week. There's going to be about one or two days that I may not be trading at all because I have to have my funds settled. I'm looking for a goal about $250 per trade. My target goal for like the first you know, month is about $1,000, right? Um, there will be trades that will be very quick, so be prepared. And there will be times I will cut out right away as well. These last two points I want you guys to understand. I already kind of talked on the point that uh, if you're not awake early, there will be times that I will trade pre-market. If I find a hot press release right away, I'm going to hop in and look to make my money. I'm looking to grow my account, and if I see the opportunity, I'm going to attack it. With that being said, guys, go to the second to last point. There will be trades that will be very quick. Be prepared, right? There will be times that maybe a stock is about to break a resistance line, and we're just seeing it on the scanner. And I say, oh, wow, you know, this stock is about to break a resistance line. Had a hot press release this morning. was a top gainer. I've got to get in right now because this stock is starting to break this resistance line. So I hop in on this play, and maybe it shoots up 30 cents or so. And then you know what happens? You know, the stock you know, just had its breakout, I lock out. And by that time, you know, some people are still typing in their orders or haven't gotten in yet or anything like that. And people are like, oh, deck, that was too quick for me. You know, that's not my fault if a stock is too quick for you. That's like asking to play in the NBA and be like, that guy's too good. Take him out on the other team. It's like, you know, you go to the NFL, you never, uh, you know, touch the football in your life. And it's like, you know, these guys are really big. You know, these guys are really, you know, these guys are a lot faster than me. Can they sit out? It's like, if you guys are not prepared, this is not going to be an easy thing for you. I will tell you guys that right now, right? There will be times that I'm going to get in and I am going to get out. And it's going to sometimes be in a very short manner. And that's because I'm expecting a rush of volume. I'm expecting a break of resistance. And I want to lock in my profits when I have them. If you are not prepared and you have not studied, and you have not done any paper trading, and you have not traded for a while, and you are, again, just basically blindly following, there may be times that you are, you are either A, not getting in, B, buying at the top, anything along these lines, because you are, don't really know what's going on here. So you have to be prepared for this upcoming challenge. There will be times I will cut out right away as well. If I buy into a stock, I buy in at $2. I'm expecting volume to push in at $2. And volume never does. And I'm sitting there for, let's say, 30 seconds. And all of a sudden, the stock starts going to 199. I'm not waiting for a $200 loss. I'm not waiting for a 15 cent stop loss. I'm going to get out right away. I'm going to get out once that play starts selling a little bit weaker. If I hop in at $2, and let's say I'm expecting something, and the stock doesn't do it, and now it starts going back down to 199, 198, yeah, I'm getting out. 
So I don't want, like, there will probably be a time, you know, someone will be like, hey, you know, you bought in at two bucks. You know, you were had a you were look you had your sell target uh, all the way up to 225, and you told us your stop loss was two, uh, 185. Yeah, but I noticed that this didn't have any volume. I'm not going to wait for my stop loss to be hit for me to say, oh yeah, now I should get out. Yeah, now I'm down 200 bucks. Now I should get out. If things aren't going my way right away, I'm cutting out and taking a five dollar loss. So again, you know, yes, I'm going to have a stop loss. I will have a sell target. But with that being said, the stock market is a forever changing environment. If we have a game plan and I'm expecting the big rush of volume and it doesn't come or anything like that, then yes, I'm getting out right away and breaking even or get or maybe taking a penny loss or a penny win, right? And that's you know what I'm going to stick with. And that's again, once again, from being prepared, understanding market conditions. And these are why I wanted to go over this presentation right now to tell you guys exactly that, right? As we progress. And the small account challenge, we'll obviously have more trading. We'll be able to buy bigger shares, but we're going to still stick with the same strategy of being consistent, still not getting emotional, waiting for the best trades, being a stock sniper. You guys know, right? The only thing that changes when we have a bigger account is that we're able to play more stocks, higher price stocks, and be able to buy more shares on the little stocks, right? And we could you know, trade more uh, probably daily then as we're not using probably our whole entire account. But, you know, at the start, the first few months, you know, definitely you got to be ready for those, right? You definitely got to be ready for that. Uh, the small account challenge purpose. What is the purpose of the small account challenge? To put myself in a new trader's shoes, right? To teach you the successful way to grow a small account, to be the best mentor I can be. The small account challenge is not here just to follow, all right? The small account challenge, the reason I do this every single year is because I don't want to be a mentor. I don't want to be a person who is just going to sit and trade with an $80,000 account and make $10,000, $6,000, $5,000 a trade when 90% of the traders I work with are saying, oh, Deck, that's awesome. I made 150 bucks today. And, and they feel bad about that, right? Or they're saying, Deck, how do you make so much and we're not making as much? Oh, Deck, you played a stock that's $10. I can't play that stock. I have a small account. What kind of mentor would I be if I just sit and basically play with something that's so much better, you know, and, and basically you guys don't have the same uh, advantage, right? That's not fair. That's like, you know, that's like me having a basketball and having a, you know, a really nice basketball with really nice shoes and I throw you guys a deflated basketball and you guys are wearing flip-flops and I'm like, hey, let's play. But every time I have the ball, I have my good ball and basketball shoes. Every time you have the ball, you have to play in flip-flops and the ball doesn't have any air, right? So I want to be able to be a mentor. I want to be able to be a person that goes down and shows you guys the proper way to grow, shows you guys the proper way to have success in this market. Right? And that's, you know, super important to me. That I'm able to put myself in your shoes and be able to actually help you guys. Be able to say to yourself, hey, let's do this together. Let's work together. Let's live stream this. And let's all be able to grow our accounts together. That's the most important thing to me. So I want to teach you this, uh, the sexual way, a successful way to grow an account. Be the best mentor I can be. But that last point is so important as well. The small account challenge is not here for you just to follow exactly what I do, right? I want to teach you, and yes, I want every single person to make money. But that does not mean, oh, I can sign up and I can just follow exactly what he does. You will not, I repeat that right now, you will not be successful, and you will probably lose your account if you have never traded before, if you have never done this before, and all you're trying to do is blindly follow what I'm doing. And I'm just being open. I'm being honest with you. Right? If you are not willing to work hard, if you are not willing to watch recaps, study lessons, if you are not willing to go ahead and get the ultimate trading course we offer, what's going to happen, guys? You guys are going to end up saying, hey, I don't understand why you bought in on this. Hey, why did you get in on out of this so quickly? I couldn't follow. Hey, I was sleeping in. I didn't know you were going to trade right now. Hey, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Right? I want people to be able to say, I understand why Dex getting in on this play. I'm going to get in on it because he's getting in on it for this reason. I don't want people saying, 
Okay, I'm just going to sit here. Oh, did Deck buy something? All right, he's in right now. All right, I'm buying that one. Why am I in? I have no idea. He's in on it, though. He makes money, so I'm just going to buy this one. Right? No, because that's usually going to, you are going to get like a higher price than me, which is going to be bad because if the stock falls, I don't want anyone losing. Right? I want people to know why I'm getting in on plays, having the same game plan as, uh, as me, and knowing that before I even explain it. I want to teach you guys my strategy. I don't want anyone to be a follower here. I want our community to be a community of leaders. And that's what we are. And again, I get so fired up about this, so passionate, because I know, I know so many people can do this, and I know so many people can grow a small account, and I know so many people can be successful in this. But the, the sad thing is, not everyone is willing to put in the work. Not everyone is going to say, yeah, I'm going to you know, do exactly, um, I'm going to you know, get into the study, uh, the video library. I'm going to you know, go ahead and look at the ultimate trading course. I'm going to watch YouTube videos. People may say they're going to do it, you know, but talk only goes so far. You have to put in the actual work. So as you guys know, our small account challenge is starting up Monday, March 25th. Starting this weekend and so on after that, we will be having one week free trials for all signups. This weekend, though, we are allowing 300 members in our uh, chat room. If you guys are already in, of course, of the chat, you guys are all set and ready to go. But for this weekend and the first few weeks, we're only allowing 300 spots. The first 300 people who sign up are going to be allowed in our chat room. We allowed the first 600 uh, when we first came over to Tradecaster, and we have our 600 in chat. Um, we are opening it up for 300 more for uh, the small account challenge. If you want to get in on that, that opens up this weekend. Uh, obviously, after you guys go to Tradecaster, you have to join a premium membership. Tradecaster.com is free to sign up, but to have access to our chat and all the free les or all the lessons, you need a premium membership, and that's where your one-week trial will be added. Uh, to find us, as always, you just click the lobbies page and the Deckmar Trades uh, a stream will pop up. We stream, as I said, from 7 a.m. to about 7 p.m. every single night. So that's when you'll see our stream. Um, on top of that, the Deckmar Trades Ultimate Trading Course is a great course as well. If you guys are looking to take your trading to the next level or get prepared for the Small Account Challenge, that's right on top of the Tradecaster header. So you guys can go ahead and get that before we dive into it. And on top of that, guys, we take pride in being known as one of the largest and top-rated trading communities in the world. Right? I've worked with over 3,000 traders from the members that have been in our old website to the members that we have now. You know, we have over 600 members right now. We're allowing 300 more members to come in as, uh, as uh, we go into our small account challenge. I take pride in the cred uh, credibility we have here. I take pride in what we're known as here as a very credible um, chat room. It's very clean and very professional. Again, I don't allow you know, people pumping and dumping stocks. If you do that, you get kicked. I don't allow people you know, talking bad about other people. If you do that, you get kicked. I don't even allow cursing in chat. Right, because I don't want to see f this, f that, you know, f f whatever. That's not cool, right? We're here to trade together. We're here to learn together. We're here to make money together, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm super excited about starting up the small account challenge. I'm super excited to uh, to work with you guys, and I'm super excited to see you guys profit. With that being said, Monday, March 25th, it is going down, starting on up. I hope you guys are fired up. And with that being said, guys, let's get it started. Ow!